back to my channel. It's your girl, the koala. Coming at you with red lips and some cleavage, cleavage, because how else am I gonna get views? <laughs> Just kidding, but maybe not. Anyhow, today's video is a little bit random, but I really do enjoy doing random videos. So here we are. Today's video is a little bit of a random video, but I really, really do enjoy doing random videos. And when I think about it, I only have two random videos on my channel as far as I can recall. One of them is 10 facts about me, which was one of my earliest videos when I started this channel about a year ago. And the second one was recent. It was about my seven random pet peeves. So if you want to check those out, I will link them in the description box below. But this video specifically is about the five facts that being an immigrant have taught me as far as life and really being an American, especially maybe life in the USA. America is a big melting pot of so many different cultures, but it's still more true Americans now as far as where we are now in the country, more than immigrants, fresh immigrants. So I feel that I have a pretty unique perspective as I'm a first generation immigrant. I came here when I was 11 years old, um, going on 12. So moving right into sixth grade in the USA, coming from Poland. In that sense, I feel I have a pretty unique story, but let me stop blah 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 ing, and get right into it about the five things that being an immigrant has taught me as far as living and appreciating life so i think the first thing that i can say about being an immigrant is i feel that it really has helped me and continues to help me stay mindful and extremely appreciative of the fact that I live in the United States, that I am a US citizen, even though just 10 years, but still, wow, thank you God. But I feel much more appreciative of my freedoms, of being an American, of living in this country. I feel that a lot of young people these days, especially young Americans, take their rights and privileges and so many blessings for granted, really. And especially I feel that there are... Let me fix this, be leading. I feel especially nowadays, there are so many young Americans, uh, say college level, at exiting high school that talk about communism and how America sucks so bad and they are completely against our country and pro-communism. But I would just say to those people, you are free to leave. So go ahead, pack your bags, go try living in Cuba or North Korea and then report back to me. Because even though I did not grow up in communism, I merely existed for three years of it in a communist country. So no, I don't have those experiences firsthand, but I witnessed my country going through transition when communism fell in 89, I was born in 86, and the stories of my parents, especially my grandparents, and knowing how truly hard it was, and you know, that people stood in queue um, I said it's so British, stood in line just to get basic amenities for hours, um, you know, milk and, and, and meat and things were not always available. And I remember my father talking about uh, <clears throat> the military uh, state that Poland was in um, for a bit in the 70s. And just, you know, there was a curfew and things were a bit dangerous. But anyways, I don't want to get too deep into that. Coming to this country, um, at age 11, 12, and then having this new transition into young adulthood in a new country, 
I just feel so extremely appreciative of living in the United States. Of course, it's not perfect, but there are so many more countries where things are worse and I truly love America. I love this country. Even though it's not as perfect as it could be, it is still a free, beautiful country based on the most amazing values. And I feel such an honor to be a US citizen. I actually cried at my naturalization ceremony 10 years ago. 10 years ago in July, I became a US citizen. And to this day, that was one of the most profound moments of my life. So I just wanna say that being an immigrant and moving here at age 11, 12, it just really, has fostered a deeper appreciation in me for my freedoms, for this country, for everything that it has to offer. Every time I look at my US passport, I am filled with so much pride and joy and, and really just gratitude because this is a beautiful country and I am so blessed to live here, to be a US citizen, to just enjoy life and as much as I love Poland and I do have dual citizenship, I also have a Polish passport, I I just don't think I would be as happy living in Poland and that is not a diss on my country. I love my homeland and I love to visit and I think maybe because I came before the formative years of, of being a teenager and I have so many memories and I grew up here so of course I have more of a home feeling here but nevertheless it doesn't really change the fact that i do think you are more free here than in other countries and that's just what it is and i feel that i really appreciate it and to these young americans who i think that life in this country is so horrible and yeah communism one educate yourself but really educate yourself Two, I don't know, try and experiment. Go forth and conquer, go live in the communist country. And if you are lucky enough to even get back, you know, then report. But why would you want to come back to awful United States when communism is so great, right? So let me not get too deep into the tangent, but that was my first reason why I feel I have an extra deep appreciation and perspective for living in this free country uh, because I am an immigrant. The second thing that being an immigrant has given me and taught me is being multilingual. I know, of course, in the United States, Spanish is frequently spoken, especialmente aquí en Miami, cada persona habla español y también tengo Spanglish. So Spanish is wonderful. There's so many people speaking it here in the US, especially Miami, um, Texas, where I grew up. But of course, the, the national language of the country is English. And I do feel that in American education systems, um, the emphasis on foreign language is not as strong as in Europe, where I grew up. And again, this is not a diss on the country or the public education system, but I find that people don't speak as many languages here in the US as you find going abroad. And this is something that I really like about myself. And it's really kind of funny because so many people will compliment me on, oh, wow, you speak so many languages. Um, and I guess I technically speak four. I speak English, Polish, Spanish and German. Mind you, German was my second language, so I used to be fluent in German. I was speaking German before I ever learned any words in English, and like I said, I was fluent, and at this point, it kind of went away, but it's still like a, a drawer that needs WD-40. It's deep in there, and I'm pretty advanced, and I think that if I were to go back, it would just be a matter of time. Hallo, wie geht's? Ich bin Martha. Ich habe drei oder vier Jahre in Deutschland, in Deutschland gewonnen, in Osterbrück, uh, wenn ich war ein Kind. Aber heute mein, mein Deutsch uh, ist schlecht. <laughs> But anyways, my, my German, I sh I'm sure, would get back to fluent, you know, within probably half a year of me being there again. And the fourth one is Spanish, and my Spanish is advanced, almost fluent, so it's just 
a matter of, of practicing, but I'm not saying this to sit here and boast or anything, not at all. I just wanted to actually make this comparison because when I went to medical school in, in Europe, because I went back to my home country of Poland and I studied in the international program, which has mostly Norwegians and Germans, also other European countries and some Americans and Canadians as well. But the funny thing is that in the United States, people would be so impressed or I don't know what better word to use, but they would always be like, oh, you speak so many languages and, and think that is so cool and that I'm so smart. But then when I went to med school in Poland and I met all my classmates, especially the Norwegians and Germans, most of them spoke four to six languages fluently. And again, that just shows you, I think the differences in the, the educational systems, the culture, and also mind you, Europe is much more smaller as a continent and every country has its own language. So I think that's also part of it, you know, people traveling, moving, um, but I will say also in Europe, um, the emphasis on, on learning a foreign language is much more emphasized, it's much more important, and also they do it at a much younger age. Knowing different languages, I think, is another aspect of being a foreigner that I'm really glad and happy about. I think the third thing that is a pretty unique thing that being an immigrant has given me is I have a lens of understanding other fellow immigrants and having more of empathy and understanding and appreciation for them. Uh, I think that a lot of Americans do tend to look down on immigrants and I'm not trying to get political here. I, I was a legal immigrant. I went through over 10 years in the, the visa system, green card and all that and from Coming here in 1998, it took up until 2012 for me to become a citizen. So I'm not talking about the legalities or whatnot. I don't believe in illegal immigration. I believe in the legal path. But what I'm trying to get at is that there are quite a lot of people that lack sympathy and understanding for immigrants in the United States, especially Americans. and. I don't know everyone's story, right? But I feel that being an immigrant myself, even though for me it has been longer, it gives me more of an open heart, more gentleness, and I think more of an open door as far as other people, the, the immigrants, feeling comfortable and secure for coming to me. I remember one of my dear friends that I'm still friends with, and she now, lives in Arkansas with her two children, but I first met her in 2010 or 11, and she's from Iran, she's Persian, and I remember when we first met at work, she was such a fresh immigrant, and she had so many questions about the country, and for me, it was such a joy to, to share, to be a safe space for her, for any questions she had, because even though I moved when I was a child, I still went through a lot of the things that she's going through now as far as learning the language, the customs, all those little things that you don't even think about. And this face is because I'm reminded of the things you don't think about. So let me just segue to a really funny quick story is when I first moved to the US coming into sixth grade. So you guys don't even realize this, but let me put you on some game. In the United States, if you look at the money, but specifically um, the coins, a quarter, a dime, a nickel, what the fuck is that? When you are an immigrant, wherever the fuck you're from, usually coins will actually have the number written on it, five, 10, Okay, we get it because it's math, it's universal. But how the fuck is anyone supposed to know what the fuck a dime is, what the fuck a quarter is? You guys, I was on that struggle bus for a year to two years when I first moved to the US. I mean, the quarter is a little bigger and it's the one you use for laundry and getting newspapers, so that really helped me. But man, I struggled between a dime 
and a nickel for the longest fucking time. And that's just something y'all don't think about, but why, why can't we just write the number on the coin? Just saying. <laughs> so the fourth thing that I feel that being an immigrant has given me and taught me as far as life is being able to adapt to change and do it successfully. Because I think change is something that a lot of us fear, but there's nothing to be afraid of. With change comes growth. Change can be uncomfortable, but growing is an uncomfortable process to get you to the next stepping stone in life. And so me being an immigrant, moving continents, literally with my parents at such a young age, you know, I of course didn't want to leave my friends. I had a whole life in my country, my, my grandparents and my whole family. And yet here we are doing this giant trip across the Atlantic to start a new life. But I realize now in retrospective, how much power and strength and fortitude this has given me in life on the whole because then as immigrants we also moved quite a lot because of visa reasons um i lived in texas i lived in nebraska i lived in washington state i lived in california i, I live in florida now but all of these moves and changes i think would not have been as easy for me had I not been an immigrant in the first place and making such a big stride in my life alongside with my parents, because essentially I was forced to, right? As an 11 year old, you don't really get say when parents are moving, you're coming with, right? But I am just so grateful in retrospect because it has given me so much strength and power to not be afraid of change, to really actually embrace change. And so I have been moving again a lot lately in my life and a lot of different changes, starting a new school and things. But those changes that I already went through were building blocks to help me go through more changes. And so whatever your life may look like, I really employ you to try changing things in your life as uncomfortable as it may be because these things, these lessons from changes can have such profound effects on you as far as your future and being able to take bold moves and embrace change in a beautiful way because change actually can be extremely beautiful and give us so much value in life. So the fifth and final thing that being an immigrant has given me in, in the sense of part of my personality and who I am, being an immigrant has actually given me a deeper appreciation for my own culture. And it's kind of funny in the sense that the saying, you don't know what you have until it's gone, and I'm relating this to my country because, I mean, I just said previously, I don't see myself living in Poland, but when I left my country, and then when I left my country again in 2017, after living there for five years, there were things that I just took for granted, um, food, family, certain cultural traditions and, and holidays and celebrations and even certain mannerisms of people or certain customs. Um, I'll give you one for example. In my country, men still often kiss ladies on the hand just as it like kind of like this. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a sign of respect and I feel that it's such a beautiful custom and I was reading about it and just very few countries in the world um, practice this. Um, I'm not even sure if it's really big anywhere outside of Poland, but I think it's such a cool custom. And of course, also food and music and all sorts of things. But being an immigrant and living now in the United States, I feel that I do have a much deeper appreciation of my own culture, of my heritage. And so it's a beautiful thing. Um, I feel 
extreme joy when I go to Polish stores. I feel extremely happy when my mommy cooks me some yummy Polish food. So I guess that's the last one. So that's really the fifth and final thing. Being an immigrant has given me a deeper appreciation of my own culture and I'm glad that it is. And who knows what the future will bring. Maybe I'll get a third citizenship, who knows, but I'm happy being Polish and American and I love living in the States, so we will see. And if you're an immigrant, tell me what sort of experiences or ways that it affected you as a person that has brought out, what has changed in you as far as who you are or the things you do or how you appreciate certain things because I'm really curious. I know I cannot be the only immigrant that is watching this channel. So let me know in the comments and I will reply as I always do. Thank you so much for being here, Kola Subbies. I love you so much. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe. Are you subscribed to my channel? You're not? Oh, you know it's free. You just click right here. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. <laughs> Come on now, you know it's free. Hit that subscribe button, please. Please, please, please. I'll do a happy dance for you. Help a girl out. Arigato. Dziękuję bardzo. A czy ktoś z Was by chciał, abym zrobiła wideo po polsku? Hmm. Dajcie znać. Wiem, że mam akcent, jak mówię po polsku, ale mówię po polsku, więc to się liczy. Więc dajcie znać. Łapki w górę. Subskrybuj. So